Welcome to Rebel Church Online. I'm Hannah. And I'm Heido. And we have some big news for you guys this morning. Next Sunday, June 7th, we are reopening our doors at 10.30 a.m. June 7th is also Rebel's sixth birthday. So we're going to have a big family service to celebrate what God has done throughout these past six years. It's a party you do not want to miss. As we prepare for reopening, know that we are taking every precaution necessary. If you're feeling sick or uneasy in any way, we're still having an online service. However, we will be here to take care of you. Before we go into worship, we want to celebrate what God did this past weekend at the San Antonio Food Bank through Rebel Church. Yesterday, over 25 Rebels organized and packaged food to be distributed to families around the city. We are so thankful to those who volunteered their time to serve this city. We are also so thankful for you that continually give to Rebel Church. It's because of you that we're able to partner with organizations around the city and show people the love of Jesus. There are three ways that you can give. You can click giving on the top right hand corner of your screen. You can text give to the number below or you can give on the app. So let's take a moment to pray over our giving. Lord, thank you for the generous blessings that you give us here at Rebel Church, Lord. And I pray that you use the gifts that are given to you to benefit your kingdom. I pray that you multiply them for your honor, for your glory. And I pray that you continue to bless those who give cheerfully. We love you, and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Who's ready to worship? I know I am. Stand to your feet.
Jesus, you change everything. Lives healed, hope found here now. Jesus, you change everything.
there's a new day on the rise and the enemy is shaking as the graveyards bring alive so we will sing we will dance to the earth that goes to heavens sing his praise till we see the other side let us live in world let us Hey, Rebel family, we want to welcome you in to Rebel Online this morning for this final week of our series, New, and the final week of this church gathering lockdown. That's right. Next Sunday, June 7th, we are gathering again. We miss you guys so very much, and we cannot wait to see you. So don't miss it right here in service next Sunday at 1030 a.m. But I want to jump right into our message this morning, which is entitled Flip the Script. That's right. I said Flip the Script. And a couple of uh, weeks ago, I was uh, going to take a payment for the church uh, over to a company. And I pulled into the parking garage and walked up to the security guard and, and said, hey, I'm here to make a payment. And he called up. And sure enough, they said, you know, come on in. And he said, I got to escort you. And so as we were walking up, we began you know, just talking and conversating. And by the time we got to the, the 12th floor, you know, he said, you know, this is crazy what's going on right now. And I said, I agree, man, it's, it's crazy times. And he said, you know, the thing about it is, is that from the beginning, they say one thing and then they change it and then it's this and then it's that. And the story just keeps on changing. And I said, I know, man, I agree. I'm, I'm right there with you. And as we were getting ready to leave, he made a statement to me that really stuck with me. And he said, you know what, man? The intent of every lie is to cover up the real truth. I said, I agree with that. And he said, you know, I think it was Jesus that said, if you know the truth, then the truth will set you free. And uh, we shook hands and, and said goodbye. But uh, the statement he made stuck with me. The intent of every lie is to cover up the truth. And so I began to think about that. And you know, if you go back to Genesis, we find 
uh, Satan in the Garden of Eden, and he, you know, tempted uh, Eve. And, and what he actually did was deceived her. Uh, he lied to her, uh, telling her that God was trying to withhold something from her. He was deceiving and lying to her to cover up the real truth, which is, no, God has made everything for you. He has made heaven on earth. Everything that you need is here, and he created it for you because he loves you, and he wants to have relationship with you. And I started thinking about um, that, and I remember John, you know, chapter 8, where Jesus gives us some more specifics about Satan, about his lies, about how he uses them. And so I want to read to you John chapter 8 in verse 43. He's, he's talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the really, really religious people. And he says this in verse 43, why can't you understand what I'm saying? It's because you can't even hear me. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning and he has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of all lies. This is Jesus. Look at what he's saying. He's saying, look, you, you can't hear me because you don't know the truth. You've believed a lie. Your father, the devil, that, that's like some Christian smack talk right there. He's like, your mama got together with the devil and created you, and that's why you can't hear me. And the devil is a liar, and there is no truth within him. The fact that, that he, he lied to himself, thinking that he could ascend to the place of equal standing and above God. He's the father. He, he gives birth to all lies. And, and, and we have to know the truth, right? That's what Jesus is saying. He's like, you can't hear me because you don't even know the truth. You've believed the lie. Therefore, you can't even hear my voice. You don't know what is truth and what is not. And God began to, to, to speak to me as I, as I you know, meditated on this word. And he said, Brandon, you, you got you to gotta know and your people, your church, you have to know the truth. Otherwise, you might just be regurgitating someone else's lies. If you don't know the truth of, of a situation, you better know the truth. Otherwise, you're just regurgitating something that was birthed in the heart of the enemy. And it's covering up the real truth. And so, church, we've got to know the truth so that we're not regurgitating someone else's lies so that we can hear the voice of God and we, we won't end up like those Pharisees and Sadducees who thought they were really smart. In John chapter 8, the beginning of that, Jesus is on the Mount of Olives and he's teaching. And what precedes him telling uh, these guys that their daddy was the devil uh, was, was when they brought to him, Jesus is teaching on the Mount of Olives and they brought to him a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Now let's think about this for a moment. How did they catch her in the act of adultery? Was she out in the public square? No, it was a setup. They had orchestrated this. They were spying on her. They were watching her. In the moment that they knew something was going on, they bust in, they grab this woman and they drag her to Jesus and they put her before Jesus and say, hey, look, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. And the law says that we should stone her. We should kill her. And, and Jesus responds by drawing uh, in the sand, the Bible says. And it says, any of you who is without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. And he bends down again where this woman is, is, is kneeling in shame because she's been drug out in this orchestrated event, condemned to die. And as Jesus speaks truth, any of you who's without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. It says that they began to walk away and eventually they were all gone. He looked at the woman. He says, is there anybody left? No. Now, the truth is I've set you free. So go and sin no more. You know the truth now. The truth is that, that I am Jesus and I love you. And, and, and you don't have to you know, search for love in all the wrong places anymore. 
Now that you know the truth, you can be set free. Go and sin no more. And then in, in John chapter uh, 8, verse 12, a few verses down, uh, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, he said, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the life that leads to life. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. If you follow in me, you'll be able to see the truth. You'll have the light. You'll have the Holy Spirit, which allows you to walk in freedom when you walk in truth. And then in verse 31 of John chapter 8, after Jesus was teaching on the mountain, he's, he's, saying, he's saying, he's saying, I'm the light of the world. You want to follow me? And people believed it. And he, he spoke to these people and he said, to the people who believed in him. You are truly my disciple if you remain faithful to my teachings. Verse 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So Jesus is addressing some people who liked what he was saying. They liked what Jesus was teaching. But he's saying, if, if, if you are truly my disciples, you will remain faithful to what I'm teaching and if you remain faithful to my teachings, then you will know the truth. And it's that truth that will set you free. And what he's really speaking to is, is those people who are taking steps toward Jesus. They liked what he was saying, but they, they lacked the, the ability to fully embrace his teachings. Well, what were his teachings? We, we talked about it last week. He, he said the, the entirety of the old covenant or the old law could be summarized in this, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and equally as important to love your neighbor as yourself. And so what he was saying is that, is that the two things that you got to remain faithful in this is that loving God, and in order to love God, how do you love God? Well, you love your neighbor as yourself. It's the second, doing the second thing that allows you to do the first thing. In order to love God, you have to love people as you love yourself. And so if you will, you will do those things, if you will remain in those things, John 13 says, you know, they will know that you are Christians by the way that you love. This is what Jesus is trying to get us to understand is that the truth is that you're called to, to love God by loving people. What would Jesus do in any situation? He would love first. But how do we know it? He, he gives us the, the key. He says, in order to, to know it and not stray from it and, and to fully embrace it, you have to remain faithful or abide in my word, abide in my teachings. You can't let it pass through like water in a pipe. It's, it's, it's in one ear and out the other. It's here one week and it's gone the next. No, you have to meditate on it. You've got to dive in and you've got to abide in it right? That's how you will know the truth. A couple of days ago, many of you probably experienced this, but I, I dropped my girls off at a friend's house in our neighborhood. And as soon as I got back in the car on the radio, I heard arr, arr, tornado warning, you know, for every county in Texas. And so I, I go back home thinking, you know, it's all good. You know, there's, there's thunderstorms, there's tornado warnings all the time. But we turn on the TV just to check things out. And my wife uh, gets a text from her, her sister, Jacqueline. And she's like, what, you know, what are, what are y'all doing? She's like, we're in the pantry. And she's like, why are you in the pantry? She's like, because there's a tornado warning. My, my brother, who she's married to, Brian, said, y'all get in the pantry. There's a, a tornado warning. And then we talk to our kids and they're at the neighbors. And we're like, what are y'all doing? They're like, we're in the laundry room. We're like, what are y'all doing? There's a tornado warning. We're like, it's a tornado warning, right? If, if it's imminent danger, then yes, we'll, we'll jump in a closet and, and take shelter. But until then, we're going to be like my, my in-laws, Pastor Charlie and Mary. We called them. They're like, we're sitting on the couch watching the storm. Like, we've been through this, right? I hope you guys were not buried in a closet somewhere for hours with the tornado warning. But the bottom line is that Jesus was in a similar situation in Mark chapter 4, right? He was in the midst of a storm. In Mark 4, 35, 
it says this, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in a boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although the boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. It says Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Nice detail. The disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. And suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41, the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other that even the wind and the waves obey him. So if we we read that story, we find that Jesus was teaching. He gets done and he gets into a boat and he's crossing over to the other side. It says that uh, the the others who he was teaching, they they followed in boats. It doesn't say they made it to the other side. They might have turned around when they saw the storm coming. But Jesus and his disciples... They're going across this, this lake, which was uh, really more like an ocean because it's huge. And it says that this great storm came, almost like a, a hurricane, the Bible describes. It's, it's a pretty bad storm. And it says that the disciples become afraid, but Jesus is just chill, like he's sleeping in the boat. And, and when they came to him, they were like, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care? Can't you see what's going on? Don't you care about us? We're going to drown here. And it says that Jesus simply got up and he rebuked the the, the wind. And he said to the waves, just be quiet. Just be still. And they were terrified, like, whoa, who is this dude? That even the wind and the waves obey him. But what I find interesting there is that Jesus, it says, he rebuked the wind. Before he spoke to the waves, he rebuked the wind. Why? Because it's the enemy who stirs up. It's the wind. It's the enemy. It's the wind that stirred up the waves that were crashing down on the boat. And so before he he spoke to the waves, he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the source. And see, The reality is in our lives is before we can speak to the waves, we have to rebuke the wind. Before you can speak to any situation in your life, you have to know the truth of who's behind that situation. It makes no sense to be rebuking waves when it's the wind who's stirring them up. You're doing no good. You got to realize who's behind it. The enemy is behind it. See, there's a lot of chaos going on in our world right now. We've been in the midst of a pandemic, and when this thing is ending, now we've got uh, the the George Floyd incident and all of these riots, and and don't get me wrong, right? What happened, you know, this past week is just unfathomable. It's just ridiculous. It's outrageous. Like, people need to be held accountable. What happened to George Floyd was was terrible. But what we have to realize is that who is behind? Who is behind everything that's going on? All of the chaos, everything that's being stirred up right now. We can see the waves, the manifestation of the waves coming on all different fronts. And it's going to continue for the time being. But as followers of Jesus, we got to know the truth so the truth will set us free. We got to speak to the winds before we can speak to the waves. And the truth is this. The truth is that whoever orchestrated it, the, the waves, whoever orchestrated all of the events that are attacking our nation right now, everything is being stirred up by the enemy. He is the wind behind it all. You've got to realize that. Why? He is out there to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. He wants to destroy what God values most, people, his creation. That's what he loves. The enemy is trying to divide. He's trying to bring about mass 
chaos in our world. He's trying to distract us from what? He's trying to distract us from the fact that God is doing something big right now. God is flipping the script right now. You want to know what the truth is? Is that God is orchestrating something bigger than you could ever imagine. And when does the enemy fight hardest? When he's losing. I was watching an MMA fight uh, yesterday, and this dude from Brazil uh, was just, you know, he was hanging in there. But it was the third round, the last round, and he knew, like he knew that he was going down. So what did he do? He just started swinging wildly, just, just out of control. And what happened? He got knocked out. And that's what's happening in our world right now. The enemy is stirring up. He is stirring up the waves of our nation. He is stirring up and orchestrating events around our nation. Why? Because he's losing. But the truth is, and what you can't miss, is that the enemy is about to get knocked out. God is doing something, and he is preparing his people for the greatest move of God that we have ever seen. It's, it's not just a move of God for, for our church. It's not just a move of God for our city, not even for our nation, but it's a, a move of God that will ripple through the nations. And see, we have to flip the scripts in our hearts. We got to flip the scripts in our minds. We got to flip the scripts in our words and in our actions. Because the reality is, is that the enemy can't even see or comprehend what God is orchestrating in heaven to release on earth. And we got to tune our ears to heaven and we got to be expectant for what God is doing. We, we have to, to tune our ears to heaven. We got to meditate on God's word. We have to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. We got to be rebuking the wind because we know it's the wind that's stirring up the waves in our nation. We got to start talking differently. We can't walk around with our heads hung going, well, you know, it's just, I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know what the world's going to look like. I don't No, No, God is flipping the script and you got to flip the script in your heart and in your mind and in your words and your actions. You got to start acting like the battle's already been won because it has. The reality is this, is that you have nothing to fear, right? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. You are not tied to this world system. If you are a follower of Jesus, all authority has been given to you. Quit walking around like, well, I don't know what's, no. We're on top. We're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. God is fighting. Heaven is fighting our battles for us. And we have nothing to fear. And the truth is, is that there are battles left to fight, right? You have to know that there are battles still left to be fought. The Bible says that in this life, there will be trouble. Expect it. In this life, waves are going to be crashing into your boat. You are going to see chaos around you. But he says, Though there will be trouble, take heart because I have overcome the world. So you got nothing to fear. If you follow me, you have nothing to fear. See, the reality that we're stepping into as a church as we come back to gathering together is that we need to be expectant for a move of God. We, we need to be thinking like Isaiah 54, where God is saying, get ready to enlarge, get ready to expand. I am on the move. We got to flip the script in our mind saying, there, this is not destruction for me. What the enemy intended for evil, God is turning to good. God is going to bring people that I've been praying for for years to the truth of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. God is going to break forth in my life. I've got my ear tuned to heaven. I know God is on the move right now. 
And I'm preparing for increase. I'm not walking around with my head held low. No. My heart, my mind, my words, and my actions are in line with an overcomer. Because the battle has already been won. And I know the truth and I can see the truth. And so that's my challenge this week for you, church, as we get ready to come back together. As we get ready to, to, to hug each other and see each other in person and worship together in this place. He said, if you will abide in my word, if you will remain faithful to my teachings, which is to love first, the way that you love God is to love first, love others first, love your neighbor as yourself. That is when you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from fear. Free from the worry of, of what tomorrow holds because you know who holds tomorrow. Put that on a coffee mug. Oh, wait, it, it already is probably. But the challenge for you this week before we come back together is to meditate this week on John chapter 8. I want you to take John chapter 8 and I want you to read it over and over and over and over again. Meditate on it. Don't let it pass through like water in a pipe, but, but meditate on it. Allow God to speak to you through it. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to open your eyes to see what God is, is wanting to speak to you through his word this week. And I believe if we'll jump into John chapter eight, all of us together as a church family, meditating on that word. We come back together next Sunday. We're going to have a celebration, a celebration of expectation. I believe God is going to break out in our midst. It's going to be the, the, the beginning, the first step to a mighty move of God where we see people turning to Jesus like we've never seen them turning to Jesus before. Are you with me, church? I hope so. We can't wait to see you next week. Let's pray this morning as we close this time together. God, we love you. We thank you so much that you've laid the truth out in front of us, God. We ask this week that as we meditate on John chapter 8, Lord, that you would begin to show us things that we've never seen before. New revelations, God. That you would allow us to, to have a direct line to heaven as we tune our ears to you. You would give us insight into what you're orchestrating right now and about to release upon this earth. God, we just want to be a part of it. We want to be a part of this move of God. Help us this week, God, to have a heart and a mind and actions that are expectant of you to move. Help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Church, we love you so much. We cannot wait to see you next Sunday. That's right. I can't believe I'm saying it. Next Sunday right here in this building, 1030 a.m. We'll see you and all your friends. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday. If this is your first time, please text CONNECT to the number below. And we cannot wait to see you guys here at church next Sunday. Have a great week.